to welcome each one tonight to the house of the Lord. We're thankful for the day that the Lord has given us. Uh, we're going to stand tonight and sing what a day that will be. Uh, just, uh, just, just dwell and bask in the presence of the Lord today. I just, I just had a good day in the Lord. But as good of a day as you can have down here will never, ever, ever compare to what a day that will be. Yeah. I mean, on our best day down here, just it, it, Daniel can never, just never compare to what heaven's going to be. Amen. In the perfect place that we're going to be in, but most of all, we'll be in the presence of Jesus. Yeah. The one who saved us. The one who helped us. The one who, when we didn't deserve long suffering, was long suffering with us. The one who, who, when we were impatient, was patient with us. The one that, when we didn't deserve mercy and we didn't deserve grace and we didn't deserve his blessings, that's exactly what he gave us. So I want to stand tonight and sing, uh, What a Day That Will Be. to do that and so we're going to ask them to come uh, I'm going to get out of the way I'm going to be quiet and some of you smile tonight amen I'm going to do my best to be quiet uh, God didn't call me to be quiet Daniel uh, I, I'm not a good leader I'm not a good uh, person to start and lead the service I just want to preach amen uh, that's what he called me to do but I'm going to ask them to come 
and, and sing for us tonight. You be in prayer for them. Uh, again, we're thankful for them. Just mind the Lord this evening. Yeah. <laughs> 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 It is out of my comfort zone because I take this serious. I can get up and sing in front of my family and I'm silly and even sing karaoke with friends. But I take this very seriously. Before all this um, started, Fred asked us one night to sing and we just were not prepared because we haven't practiced or sang really in a long time. But um, it had been on probably, I'd say close to a year, the Lord gave me a few of these songs. And I would sing them in the car, and every once in a while I would tell the girls, you know, we need to practice this, we need to practice this. So it's been weighing on me for a long time to sing, because I do enjoy it. I'm not the best singer. We don't even have music. But I, I do want to do more for the Lord than that little can. push. I wasn't about to say no, so you guys pray for us. All of us are nervous, but I'm just, I consider myself blessed for this opportunity and just to be able to do it with my mom and my girls. So just pray for us. Yeah, bless your heart. <clears throat> While walking down a memory lane, a past so long ago. <clears throat> Satan came right by my side, making me feel like He brought up thoughts of hurt and pain when I had gone astray. He wanted to discourage me as I walked along my way. He said, You're Secrets that you yes. would never tell. What yeah. makes you think you don't deserve a place with me in hell? Well, I heard the old accuser, and this was my reply. You're right for all the things I've done. I truly deserve to die. My Amen. There's only one thing I can say to what you've said to me. It's under the yes. blood. Oh, oh praise his dear name. I'm not what I used to be. My life's been changed. Not shackled by sin and shame. It's already gone. But the 
have dried my tears in hell to guide me on my way. So I know he'll safely see me through the fire again. I'm glad to know it's in the Savior's hands. There will be grace, grace to make it through this trial.
man, I'm just not where I need to be. That's right. I'm just not upstairs and I just kneel down in my room. Crazy old. Because, I mean, I'm about That's to go heart. down to the world more than I've ever been. Bless you, preacher. Isaiah in the sixth chapter. <laughs> not that I'm not proud of, of Barb and Tammy, but I'm very proud of Layla and Taylor. It takes a lot of courage yeah. to get up and sing. At, 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 a, at a young age, I, I was forced, uh, and I don't, I don't mean this any derogatory way towards my mom, but I was forced as a, as a young person to get up and to sing. And I, you guys know I, I don't have a deep voice, and I've never had a deep voice. And I used to be able to hit just the highest of the high notes when I was about seven or eight years old, and mom would make me sing those at the youth choir. And it would embarrass the life out of me. And I would get so frustrated. But I'm glad that she pushed me at a, as a young teenager, as a young person, to sing in church and to get up and to do things in church. Uh, I, I, I never, as I, as I got a little bit older, singing wasn't the, the difficulty. When God called me to preach, I was scared to death to preach because I didn't want to get up and talk in front of anybody. I'd get up and sing in front of anybody. I didn't want to get up and talk in front of anybody because I would stutter and stammer around and spit and slobber and, and I'd try to testify and I'd cry or if I could get words out, I'd sit down and say, that didn't make any sense. And, and then God called me to preach and what I found was He didn't need my, my ability. He didn't need my mouth then. He didn't need any of that. He just needed someone that was a willing vessel. And I'm thankful tonight that God can use anybody that's a willing vessel to be used for Him. And whatever it is that He calls you to do or asks you to do, if you'll be willing to do that, God will provide every single time. I mean, He'll give you everything that you need and He'll give you the courage to stand up and to do those things. I, I, I'm married to one of the most shy people I, I've ever met in my life and that works really well because I'm in your face. I'm type A and she's not. Uh, and I feel like if she was type A, our marriage probably wouldn't be what it is today. Uh, but I know how difficult it is for her to get up and sing, but that's what God called her to do. And I'm thankful for people that are just simply willing. They're just simply willing to do what God called them and asked them to do so that he can receive the glory that he deserves. That's what it's all about. Yeah. It's all about giving God the glory that he deserves from us. As we preach today uh, uh, about not pumping the brakes, uh, uh, bless God, I'm thankful that when it comes to praise, uh, we ought not pump the brakes. Now, I told you that earlier today, Isaiah in the 29th chapter, in the second verse says, our praise is due. Due to the Lord, uh, the, to the glory of the Lord. And, so what I'm thankful for, amen, is that whenever I'm praising Him, I'm doing what He wants me to do to Him, or for Him. Turn your Bible tonight again to Isaiah the 6th chapter. Uh, we're going to read 12 verses here, I believe, this evening. 
Give you just a little bit of background, Daniel. Hold on one second. I told you everybody needs somebody like Daniel to preach to. Amen. He's on the edge of his seat. Uh, you open your book. He's ready to stand. I love it. Amen. I, he, I can just hear him saying, sick him. Get him. Preach harder. Amen. But Isaiah, Isaiah is, is uh, uh, one of what we call the major prophets in the Old Testament. And Isaiah, as Jeremiah was, was a young man. He was a young man that was just simply willing to serve the Lord. But Isaiah, his writing, if you read Isaiah's writing and you study Isaiah's writing, and, and many theologians believe this as well, Isaiah's writing takes a turn, Daniel. Uh, about the seventh chapter, Isaiah's writing changes. Something happens in chapter 6 that I want to look at tonight. I, Isaiah's one, Isaiah 1 through 5, Isaiah's uh, frame of mind is one way. And then something happens to him in chapter 6 that all of us need to happen in our life. Uh, Amen. And his writing changed. I mean, That's right. his, his, whole, his whole outlook on everything changed uh, from 7 to, verse, uh, to chapter 66. Uh, now, Isaiah covers uh, uh, many of the major prophecies that we read about. Uh, we read about in Isaiah the coming of a Messiah. We read about Emmanuel, God with us. In Isaiah, Isaiah calls him the Prince of Peace, the Wonderful Counselor, uh, the Everlasting Father. Uh, Isaiah also in the 53rd chapter, uh, amen, talks about him being the suffering servant there, uh, talking about his crucifixion. He was bruised for our iniquities, wounded for our transgressions, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Uh, by his stripes, we are healed. It was Isaiah that, bless God, uh, it was Isaiah in the book of Acts, uh, amen, that uh, when Philip went to go and join himself with the eunuch uh, uh, there in chapter 8, uh, it was the book of Isaiah that that eunuch was uh, reading. And, and Philip goes to him and he said, understand what thou readest tonight. And, and he said, how can I let some men show me? Uh, and it says that Philip opened uh, the same scripture uh, and began to preach unto him Jesus. Uh, the only way uh, Isaiah is able to write these books, uh, or this uh, chapter, these chapters, uh, in his book from 7 to 66, is for a change to have taken place in his life. Now let's go there tonight. I, I, I like getting way ahead of myself in the message, but I get so wound up and caught up. Hey Amen. I studied it all the way through, so I know where I'm trying to get to. Sometimes I like starting at the end and just working towards the beginning. The Bible says in uh, Isaiah 6 and verse 1, and in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. And it stood, the seraphim, each one had six wings, which twain had covered his face, and with twain covered his feet, and with twain did he fly. He did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy. You say, wait a minute. I've read that somewhere else. You're right. You have read that somewhere else. Uh, in the book of the Revelations, uh, the Bible says uh, that the angel uh, uh, began to cry and did not cease day or night, uh, saying or, or shouting, Holy, holy, holy is uh, the Lamb of God. Uh, amen. So we uh, move on down the Lord of hosts, and the whole earth stood uh, is full of His glory. And the post of the door moved, at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Bless God. You say, Austin, I've read that before. You're right, you have. The Bible says that, amen, when Solomon uh, began to sacrifice uh, and they were going to go uh, into the temple of God, uh, the Bible says that the glory of the Lord yes. filled the house uh, in so much uh, that the priest couldn't stand to amen. minister. Uh, amen. Isaiah is on point here. Uh, but then I said, so here we find Isaiah in the presence of the Lord. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then, one, uh, then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched my lip, thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Bless God. Amen. Uh, you say that it sounds like to me uh, something that's got to do with fire. Yeah, when you read uh, here a live coal, uh, amen, that means that coal was on 
fire. You say, what's that got to do with anything? Uh, hey, when John stood uh, yes. in the Jordan and he was preaching Jesus, uh, Matthew 3 and 11, uh, he said, there one come one after me, uh, who birth before, before me, uh, whose shoe latches I'm not worthy to unloosen, uh, who will come and baptize you uh, with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Amen. Uh, Isaiah felt that fire from on high. And also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? And who will go with us or for us? Then said I, bless God, here am I, send me. And he said, I need you to go to seminary school for at least four years and get your uh, biblical degree. And then we'll give you a placement in a church somewhere. And you preach the word of God once you have gone and they've taught you how to do so. No, he, well, we're, Isaiah, we're going to put you on a 10 step plan. And what we want to make sure is that you understand our ways uh, and the way that we want you to go out and do things and we'll show you how to say those things and, and tell you how to preach those things and, and give you what you need and then you go out. No. Uh, amen. Bless God. Uh, from the moment you got saved, uh, you're equipped to go uh, and tell the world about Jesus. Uh, from the moment your life changes, uh, you're ready uh, to go and work for the Lord. Uh, it doesn't take a matter of time. Uh, it's not about a process. Uh, it's about being willing uh, and able to go and do so. Uh, and he said, meaning God, uh, Go uh, and tell his people, uh, hear ye indeed and understand not. Uh, see ye indeed and perceive not. Uh, make the heart of this people fat. Uh, make their ears heavy. Shut their eyes. Uh, lest they say with their eyes uh, and hear with their ears. Uh, understand with their heart and convert and be healed. Amen. Uh, bless God. Uh, you might as well sit down. Amen. I'm going to read the rest of this in just a second. Uh, you know what he's preaching right here? Uh, he's preaching old time conviction and old time conversion. Amen. Uh, if there ain't no change, uh, there ain't no Jesus. Uh, what we need uh, is the Holy Ghost of God uh, to convict hearts. Uh, and then the Bible says, uh, and convert uh, and be healed. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, uh, he's a new creature. Old things pass away. Uh, and all things become new. Uh, that's a change that takes place. Uh, and Isaiah God is telling Isaiah, you go preach uh, that there needs to be a change. Take place. Then said I, mm, man, this is good reading. How long? How many people get saved? And they ask this question, well, how long? God calls them to preach. Well, how long do you want me to preach? Let me tell you tonight, preacher. Amen. When God called you to preach, that's a forever calling. Yep. You may retire from pastoring, but you never retire, amen, from preaching. Bless God. Uh, the Bible says that His calling are without repentance, meaning He doesn't make any mistakes, uh, and He surely doesn't mean for you to back up. Uh, bless God, what I'm thankful for is some holy men of God uh, that I've sat under and I've listened to uh, that preach from a very young age, uh, and amen, on their deathbed uh, would have given anything to get up uh, and preach just one more message. Uh, he said, uh, Isaiah said, Lord, how long do you want me to go? <laughs> And he answered, until the cities be, with, be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate, and the Lord hath removed men far away, and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. You say, well, Austin, what does all that mean? That means, amen, if there's one person sitting in a church, our job is to preach the word. To get it out. I'm thankful for some people yeah. up a holler somewhere that are doing everything they can to keep a church open. I'm thankful, amen, that there are some people that are willing uh, to set aside what they want for what God wants and do everything they can. That if there be one more lost person out there, just one more person to be reached, just one more person to walk down an aisle and give their life to Jesus. Uh, yeah. He said, Isaiah, there's just one. Uh, just one left. You keep preaching. Uh, you keep telling. Uh, you keep going. Uh, you keep giving. Uh, amen. It's worth one soul. Uh, just one more soul to walk down an aisle. Uh, it's worth every bit of time. Uh, every bit of effort. Uh, every Every bit of all sleep, uh, just one more person uh, to walk down an aisle uh, yes. would make it worth it all. Amen. 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 This comes to uh, you say. So why is it then that Isaiah's writing changes in chapter seven? He got to a place where he could see God. He got to a place, bless God, where he had been somewhere where he had not been before. And he saw something he had not seen before. Uh, and he felt something he had not felt before. Uh, and bless God, that changed him forever. Uh, you can get to a place in your life uh, where you may know the right time to sing a song. Uh, and you might know the right verse to read. Uh, and you might know the right time to shake hands. Uh, but bless God, if you don't get to a place uh, where you've been in a place where you've never felt before. 
before, never seen before, never been before, with God. Amen. It can change your life tonight. Isaiah was a young man. There's a misconception out there, Daniel, that you've got to be an old man to be able to get the word out. Been fighting that since I can ask my call to preach. Yeah. Let me tell you something tonight. Age has got nothing to do with it. Amen. It's your willingness to follow after the Lord. Hey, bless God. Hey, when we talk about or read about an elder in the Bible, we're not talking about age. We're talking about spiritual maturity. We're talking about somebody that has set their life in order with God, that has followed after God, lived their life for God. There's a lot of you out there tonight. Bless God. Hey, man, you've, you've grown in age, but you're not grown in spirit. You've grown in age, but you've not grown in wisdom. You've grown in age, but you've not grown in knowledge. Bless God, don't get on me when I don't look at you as an elder. Get off the milk, get on the meat, and get off my toe. Hallelujah, that's good preaching. Hey, you might be young, bless God, but if you're willing to follow after the Lord, He's willing to give you a word for Him. Amen. He's willing to give you just exactly what's needed. As I read this book, you know what he told Jeremiah? He said, I have ordained you from your mother's womb. Yes. And I have called thee. Amen. And then he told him, I've prepared you. <laughs> and you know what happened? When Jeremiah began to think that God forsook him there in, in Jeremiah chapter 20. Jeremiah chapter 20, he sat down and he said, Lord, basically, if I can paraphrase, Lord, you've lied to me. You've left me. Lord, you, uh, amen, I, I'm not going to mention your name. Here's what I've decided tonight, folks. Those of you listening out there, those of you that are in here. Here's what I've decided tonight. Those that want to receive the Word of God, I'm going to preach to. Those that don't want to receive the Word of God, I'm going to preach to. Amen. Yeah, amen. Bless God. Uh, those that want help, I want to help. Those that don't want help, I want to help. Bless God. Uh, those that want love, I want to love. Uh, those that don't want me to love them, I want to love. Bless God. Uh, Jeremiah said, Lord, uh, I'm not making mention of your name. Uh, I'm not speaking your name anymore. Uh, I'm not prophesying your name anymore. Uh, and then he sat down uh, and he tried to quit uh, and he tried to stop. Uh, he said, but his word uh, was in my heart uh, as a burning fire uh, and I could not stay. Uh, bless God, what we need uh, is the same fire I say and the same God in our life to come in our life and set our soul on fire again. Amen. The Bible says in Luke chapter 24, O Cleopas and I believe his wife Mary took the long walk, uh, bless God, down to Emmaus, seven and a half miles. Uh, amen. They walked to Emmaus. Uh, and the Bible says they were talking about uh, these days. Uh, I bless God, I believe uh, we're in these days uh, that they were talking about. Uh, we're in these days uh, that Paul was talking about to Timothy. Uh, he said, what days are those? Uh, he said, in the last days, men uh, shall be lovers of their own self. Uh, blasphemous, boastfemers, uh, hey, blasphemous, blasphemous uh, boasters, uh, unthankful, unholy, hey, uh, high-minded, uh, bless God, uh, Lovers of men uh, more than lovers of their own selves. Uh, I'm telling you tonight, uh, having a form of godliness, uh, but denying the power thereof. Uh, we're in these days. Uh, we're in those days. Uh, we're in the last days. Uh, but bless God, the same person uh, that helped the office uh, and helped Mary uh, can help you this evening. Amen. So that as they walked, one came walking up behind them yeah. and joined, <laughs> bless God, and joined himself with them. Oh, aren't you thankful for the day that you was living in these days? That you was living in dark days. Yeah. What days was Cleopas and Mary talking about? They were talking about the day that Jesus had died. The day that their heart was ripped out. The day that their whole life got turned upside down. Even though Jesus had told them what was coming. Bless God. Thank you, Lord. Even though Jesus had told them what was coming. You say all this stuff that's going on nowadays has just caught me off guard. Open your Bible. Amen. Uh, bless Amen. God. Uh, it shouldn't catch you off guard when these things happen. Uh, it shouldn't catch you off guard uh, when trouble happens, when tribulation happens, uh, when famine hits, uh, when all these things come because the Bible says, uh, Amen, that these things will come uh, to pass. Uh, amen. Uh, he said when you hear uh, or read uh, about earthquakes and other places, uh, when you read a famine uh, and pestilence, uh, bless God, God, when you hear Amen. wars Amen. and rumors of wars, uh, for this is the beginning uh, of sorrows. You jump down a few verses. Uh, Matthew 24, verse 35 says this uh, But they that endure till the end, uh, the same shall be saved. Uh, but you've got to grab yourself by the bootstraps uh, and decide tonight uh, are you going to endure? Uh, are you going to stand true? Uh, are you going to stand on the word? Uh, or are you going to be affected uh, by everything around you tonight? Lord, hallelujah. Good preaching. Good preaching. Bless the Lord. Bless you all.
Bless God. We got to realize tonight, amen. He's not caught off guard. Amen. Where are we at? Cleopas and Mary walking. What a maze. What a way to maze. It said Jesus joined himself with him. You know what he said? Why, bless God, there's the rain. Amen. I've been waiting on that rain to hit all day. Amen. Our mud was getting dehydrated. Bless God. He said, Amen. He said, Why are you sorrowful? He said, Have you not been? What are you, a stranger? Are you a foreigner in this land? If you're like Jesus walking on the scene right now and seeing the sad shape that we're in right now and saying, What's going on? Why are you guys so sad? What do you mean, why are we so sad? The earth's been turned upside down. Amen, people. We're doing a crazy stuff nowadays. What do you mean what's going on? He said, tell me what, what, what's going on. And they begin to go into detail about how he had been crucified and taken from them. How sad and sorrowful they were. And this is what I like. Bless God. This is what I need. This is what you need. It's what they needed. And then he said, he opened the scriptures yeah. Amen. You know what that means? He gave them the Word. That's right. Amen. He gave them the Word of God. Amen. You say, I need something today. What do I need? You need the Word of God. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my Word shall never pass away. The Bible says, Amen. The Word of the Lord is sharp and powerful, quick and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even in the center of the deep, and in the soul and spirit, and it is the center of the thoughts and intents of the heart. We need the Word. We need the Word. We I bless God. Amen. And the word came when holy men of God were moved upon by the Spirit of the Lord. Bless God. He said, Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, repent, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endorse sound doctrine, but after themselves, if themselves teachers, have it in your ears. He said, From such, turn away. Bless God, they'll be turned away from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Bible says in Luke 24, I keep running off Luke 24. Luke 24, amen. He said he opened the scriptures and began to preach unto them the things concerning himself. Yeah. You say in their situation, Jesus wasn't caught off guard? Nope. You say in my situation, is Jesus caught off guard? Nope. If turmoil and tribulation hits in my life tomorrow, will Jesus be caught off guard? Nope. nope. Yeah. The Bible says that in the days of the, 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 the end of time, uh, amen, will be like they are in the days of Noah, amen, uh, that men's hearts shall be on evil continually. We're there, friend. Uh, we, there's no other prophecy that needs to be fulfilled. Uh, there's no other thing. I've been watching, uh, amen, I've not been watching what y'all been watching. I've been watching some other stuff. Uh, bless God in what I'm reading about. Uh, I'm reading about locusts that have taken over in Africa. Bless God, I've been reading about their, they needed, uh, amen, the Bible says uh, that the rain Amen. Uh, 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 Second Chronicles uh, 7 and 13. Uh, amen. Tells us before uh, we get to 7 and 14. Uh, amen. That the rain would be shut up. Uh, that locusts would devour the earth. Uh, and famine and pestilence shall be uh, upon the land. Uh, we, uh, You guys read about us all about uh, over in Australia. Bless God. Uh, how they had those wildfires. Uh, and they were begging for rain. Uh, asking for rain. Uh, they needed rain. Uh, amen. Then we see all this stuff uh, that comes upon us. You say, God caught off guard? No, he is not. Uh, amen. As it was in the days of Noah, shows that the last days be. Uh, you say, what was in the days of Noah? Men's hearts weren't evil continually. Uh, God said, my spirit uh, shall not always strive with man. Uh, he said it ain't. 120 years uh, God was going to destroy the earth uh, with a flood. Uh, the Bible says in Genesis uh, that uh, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Uh, amen. And he's built an ark uh, to the saving of his family. Uh, read your Bible in Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, it said that Noah built an ark uh, to the saving of of his family. Bless God. You know what happened after 120 years of Daniel? It began to rain. rain. But raining is not why it flooded. The Bible says when it began to rain that God opened up the fountains of the deep. Brother Joey Cunningham preached on that one night about three years ago in a revival right here. Never thought about it before, Daniel. Never forgot it since. He said God wasn't caught off guard. 
in the beginning of time when, when men turned against God. In fact, I believe it's in the book of, of Jude. It said that the angels left their first estate. Amen. And, and they, left the, they left their first estate. To read your Bible in the book of Jude. I believe that's where it's at. Amen. God was not caught off guard when these things happened. God was not caught off guard when men's hearts were evil continually. God had a plan. God's yes. always got a plan. Bless God. Bless God. And he said that when he looked upon Jesus, he was a lamb slain from the foundation foundations of the earth. He knew Adam was going to fail. He knew he was going to fall short. But he devised a plan. He set it in motion. He fulfilled it to a T. And all you got to do tonight is believe in it. Yes. I'm all over the place this evening. Doing good. we got to realize tonight the change in Isaiah's life needs to be the same change in your life tonight. Yes. What happened? I believe that it's awesome for about five seconds. The Bible says in the year of King Uzziah, he died. Isaiah saw the Lord. You say, what happened? I believe where he was looking changed. I believe uh, Isaiah, uh, this is just awesome for a minute. I just thank you, Lord. I believe Isaiah was looking at old King Uzziah. I believe he was trying to follow after King Uzziah. The Bible says that you read about the old king of Zion. The Bible says he followed after God. However, he refused to tear down the groves. He refused, amen, to tear down the idols of Israel. So we only have heartedly followed after God. Bless God, that's where we're at right now. We have a lot of Christians that are just half hearted. They only about halfway follow after God. They only about halfway buy in. They only about halfway want to serve Him. Oh, King of Zion knew who God was, knew what God could do, but not good enough, not strong enough, and He wasn't willing enough to tell those people to tear down the groves, get rid of their idols, and follow after God. It said in the day that Isaiah died, I believe, I believe that Isaiah's eyes changed. He began to look up, upward. He began to look upward. The Bible says, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. I believe he quit looking at everything that was going on around him and started looking up to the Lord. I believe tonight, if you want to see the change, like Isaiah saw, you've got to quit looking on what's going on around you. You've got to quit looking at what your friends are doing. You've got to quit looking at what your family's doing. You've got to quit looking at what they're doing at work. You've got to quit looking at what the heathen are doing, what the wicked are doing, hey amen. You've got to quit looking all around you, what's, what's going on all around you. I'm not talking pandemic, hey amen. People were messed up before the pandemic started. People will be messed up after it's over, bless God. I'm talking about Christian people that have got to make a decision. They're either going to look at God, follow God, trust in God, or look at the world, follow the world, and trust in the world. But I believe Isaiah got his eyes pointed up towards heaven. He said, the Bible says, hey amen, bless God. And, uh, we've been in Matthew 6 anyway. I believe that's where it's at. He said, when these things come to pass, Matthew 24, when these things come to pass, look up for your redemption. Draw it nigh. You say, where do my eyes need to be? Right now, our eyes got to be on Jesus. Amen. Six months ago, your eyes need to be on Jesus. Six months from now, your eyes better be on Jesus. Amen. If you want to be a Christian, follow after God, you got to get your eyes on Jesus tonight. Yes. Bless God. We got a, we've got a, 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 a phenomenon that's going on right now in our country. I'm not talking about pandemic. I'm talking about people that are putting their self-worth in how many likes they get on Facebook, uh, how many follows they have on Twitter, uh, how many snaps they get on Snapchat. Uh, bless God, uh, I believe we've got a phenomenon going on uh, where we allow the world uh, to tell us what we're worth. Uh, we allow the world uh, to tell us how important we are. Uh, we allow the world, uh, amen, there's preachers out there tonight uh, that are preaching just like we are. Uh, amen, and they're going to be concerned uh, about how many watched uh, and how many liked uh, and how many shared. Uh, bless God, I hope you like it. Uh, I hope you shared, but my message isn't changed. If it was there or it's not there, yes. we preach the word. My self worth is not on how many people share it. My self worth is not on how many people like it. Amen. The worth of a man, oh Marcus Aurelius said, the worth of a man is based upon the object he follows after. I'm following after God. If you think I'm unworthy, if you 
If you think I ain't worth much, uh, my father uh, owns a cattle uh, on a thousand hey, miles, uh, and he calls me royalty and all. It doesn't matter to me how many people like it or don't like it. I don't mean that sarcastically. I don't mean that harshly. I don't care if you put the little heart thing on this message. I don't care if you put the, the frown face or the, or the thumbs down. Bless God. My message won't change for nobody. Bless God. You didn't get... Oh, yeah. You didn't save me. You don't keep me. You didn't call me. You didn't give me the message. I don't need to hear from you. Bless you, preacher. Bless God. He saved me. Yeah. He called me. Yeah. He put me where He wants me to be at. Yeah. My self-worth isn't how many numbers are on that board. That's right. My self-worth isn't on how many salvations we see in here a year. My self-worth is what my Father in Heaven, when He looks down, and He said, and this is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. <laughs> Bless God dang, if me and you the only ones here, and I know we wouldn't be, Amen, because there's still some people out there that want to hear good preaching. Amen. Amen. I'll say it's good preaching myself. Amen, Amen. preacher! Amen. Preach on! Yeah. Yes! We need it! Yeah. When I get done and I kneel and pray, if everybody in the church stood up and clapped and God was displeased, it wouldn't amount to nothing. That's right. If I get done and I kneel at an altar, and everybody walks out of here and refuses to shake my hand, which I ain't shaking hands tonight. I ain't trying to say that. And I get up and everybody refuses to shake my hand and talks about me to my wife and behind my back. Guess what? And God's well pleased. That's right. Happy am I. Bless you, preacher. You say why? Because the only thing in your life that matters and the only thing in life that matters, in my life that matters, is if Jesus Christ, when He looks upon me, is well pleased with the work that's being done from me. The only thing that matters in your life is if God looks down upon you and says, this is my beloved son, this is my beloved daughter, this is my beloved child, in whom I'm well pleased. He said, amen to those servants that have went out and bought and sold and gained in their talents. He said, I've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many. Uh, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Uh, not ruler, uh, not king. Uh, bless God, uh, servant. Uh, you know what? Bless God, uh, my job as a pastor uh, is to be a servant for the church uh, and to be a servant for God. Uh, your job, uh, bless God, as a Christian uh, is to be a servant for the church uh, and a servant for the Lord. Uh, bless God, ain't nobody uh, highly esteemed above anybody else. Uh, we're all servants for God. Amen. But I believe Isaiah got his eyes off the world and got to look it up. And that made the change in his life, Daniel. He began to look up. He began to look up. He began to see things that he'd never seen before. I believe he saw one king being laid to rest and another king being lifted up. I believe he saw one king having a dirt laid to him. And another one just keep getting picked up higher and higher and higher. Uh, the Bible says, amen, no man can serve two masters. Uh, and you'll hate the one and serve the other. Uh, amen. Uh, or hate the one and love the other. You'll serve the one uh, and despise the other. Uh, amen. No man can serve God uh, and man. And that's the world. Uh, bless God. That's these uh, fleshly things. Uh, you say, what's that got to do with me? Uh, I believe if you're going to make it as a Christian uh, and you're going to take the steps uh, that Isaiah took, uh, you're going to have to lay one man to rest uh, and lift one man up. You're going to have to lay one man to rest. That's your old uh, filthy flesh. Amen. That's your opinion. Hey, bless God. That's what you think and you want and what direction you want to go. you got to lay that to rest. The Bible says, amen, we got to keep this flesh under subjection, under submission. He said, Paul said, I crucify the flesh daily. Bless God. I believe if we're going to take the change and see the change, Isaiah saw, we're going to have to lay that flesh to rest and lift that spiritual man just as high as we can lift him. We're going to have to get our eyes off what's going on around us and get our eyes looking up to Jesus. He said, There is now therefore no, no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. And if you're listening tonight and you've got an NIV, ESV, ASV, or whatever other 
uh, the little word they want to use right there, bless God, the Bible stops. Uh, but mine does not. Uh, the King James Version of the Bible will tell you uh, that there is now therefore no condemnation in the name of Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, uh, but after the Spirit. Uh, yes. Amen. There's a way we ought to walk in this life. Uh, there's a way we ought to live in this life. Uh, and bless God, uh, if you will crucify that flesh uh, and lift that spiritual man up, uh, you can begin to see uh, what I believe Isaiah began to see. I believe he began to look up. And after he began to look up, I believe he began to look in. Now if you read your Bible in Isaiah 1-5, through 5, what you'll read from Isaiah is a whole lot of woes. A whole lot of woes. He says, woe is the farmer. Woe is the faithless. Woe is the proud. Woe is the wicked. Woe is Israel. Woe, 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 woe. But you know what, Isaiah? Bless God. Mm. You know what Isaiah began to say when he got close to God? He didn't begin to say, woe is everybody else around me. He says in verse 5, woe is me. Yes. Woe is me. The closer you get to God, the less you'll see people sitting around you. The less you'll see their faults. The less you'll see their failures. The less you'll see their sin. And the more you'll see wrong with you. The more you'll see needs fixed with you. Isaiah was a great man of God. He was a prophet of God. And as he got closer to God, it wasn't about Israel. It wasn't about the faithless. It wasn't about the proud. It wasn't about the farmers. It was about Isaiah. It was about me. It was about doing good for me. It was about getting things right in my life for me. And I believe tonight, uh, if you want to see the church grow uh, and you want to see things happen, uh, it ain't about what everybody else is doing. Uh, it's got to be about you, you, you. Uh, when I was a young preacher, uh, I began to get up uh, and I like to preach uh, and I'd get that finger out uh, and I'd point and point and point uh, and tell everybody what they was doing wrong. Uh, they ain't going to figure it out real quick. Uh, it wasn't about what everybody else was doing. Uh, it ain't about you. Uh, it's about we. Uh, it ain't just about you. Uh, it's about me. Uh, bless God, I can preach. Uh, I can give. Uh, I can force. I can try to do everything I can. But if you don't want to make a change, you ain't going to make a change. But there's one person in here tonight I can control, and that's me. And the closer you get to God, the better you'll do for you. Yes. He began to look inward, upward, and then inward. Same way you got saved. Bless God, when you came to Jesus, and I did too, I had to look up to Him. Yeah. Amen. The Bible says, God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. I believe tonight, that is the only way. The only way we can see Jesus. The only way we can see Jesus is to get on our knees yes. and begin to look up and ask God to help us. The only way we can receive the help in our life that we need is for us to be uh, uh, laid down uh, and Him to be uh, lifted up. Uh, the only way uh, that we can see people help tonight uh, in this church and in our life uh, is for us to get as low down uh, as we can on our knees uh, and on our face uh, and lift Jesus uh, just as high as we can. Uh, he said, if I even I be lifted up, uh, speaking of how He would die, uh, He said, if I even I be lifted up, uh, I'll draw all men unto me. Uh, and the more you lift Him up, uh, and the more you praise Him and the more you thank Him bless God the higher you praise Jesus the more people you'll see saved the more help you'll receive the stronger you'll be in the faith tonight I believe bless God true growth comes not on what you see on the outside true growth comes from the change that takes place on the inside before Isaiah could help anybody else Isaiah had to fix Isaiah. You know there's one of them corny sayings out there. And you know I like corny sayings. You guys know I do. But this is one of my favorite ones. He that lives in a glass house. Yeah. I'm not those times. Yeah. Amen. There's another one that I like to say too. Hey man, if your front porch is dirty, don't come to mind trying to sweep things up. Yes. What's that mean? That means you better take care of you and let me take care of me. Because when we stand in the judgment, you'll stand there for you, and I'll stand there for me. 
God don't want to hear when you get there, well, so-and-so said this, so-and-so did that, so-and-so felt this way. Uh, bless God, God's not going to say that. Uh, amen. The problem ain't ever the problem. The problem's how you handle the problem. I've read that my whole life. Uh, bless God. It was on the podium at, uh, at Father Rock Church. Clarence uh, had put it on a sign, uh, and I hated that sign. Why? Because it was right, uh, and it was true. Uh, why? The problem's never the problem. Uh, the problem is never what's really going on. Uh, the problem really is never how I feel. Uh, the problem is when I begin to react uh, off my feelings, uh, off my flesh, uh, off what I want. Uh, that's when it becomes sin. Uh, that's when it becomes wrong. Uh, and that's when I have to do something about it. Not anybody else. If you want to be a help tonight, you've got to look in here and you've got to look up here. But you don't need to be looking out here. I love Wayne Runyon. You guys know that. And that man, I don't know how, I'll tell you this, you guys know he preached with his eyes closed. <laughs> Bless God, I tried that one time. <laughs> God, didn't, God didn't give that to me to preach with my eyes closed. I sing with my eyes closed, amen. I want to see what everybody's looking at looking back at me. But he preaches with his eyes closed, and he said he did that because when he was a young man in the ministry, he would preach... And there would be older men that would sit back out throughout the congregation and just sit there and shake their head like this. <coughs> he said, so I just close my eyes as tight as I can and I just picture Jesus and I just preach to Him. Bless God, that's good advice. <coughs> but you want to know what the Spirit of the Lord will do for you? Wayne was preaching one night. I believe it was at the tent revival. And you know he preaches right down out front. You know who my second favorite minister in the, in the ministry is other than Wayne Runyon? Richard Webb. Love that man with all my heart. Well, Wayne was going one way, preaching in the spirit, eyes closed, and Richard jumped up out of his seat and was a swinging at that man, six foot six, amen. Uh, he got a wingspan from one side of the church to the other. Uh, he jumped up and began to swing him arms, uh, bless God, and stomp them feet, and they passed somewhere around the altar, never touched each other. Uh, amen. Wayne's eyes closed, uh, Richard's eyes closed, they went by each other uh, and passed by each other again, uh, and he sat back down. Uh, and people say, well, the spirit, I don't need that spirit. Uh, that spirit ain't going to do nothing for me. Uh, bless God, if you're ever going to be saved, uh, you're ever going to be held, you're ever going to be anything in your life you need the spirit of the Lord and this thing is no different all this stuff going on right now around us is no different you need the spirit of the Lord to lead you guide you, direct you and help you each and every day in your life it's about what's going on on the inside the only, the only help that you'll receive the only way that that repair in your life will come is to let the spirit of the Lord come in and show you what's wrong you know what repentance prayer never works? Bless God. Thank you, Lord. Because I've tried. Lord, if there's anything that maybe I've done, maybe, possibly, just if there's anything you can pick out at all, you know how I know that prayer don't work? Because God's already put His finger right on it. Yeah. God's already showed you just exactly what was wrong. Taylor and I appreciate your testimony. Why? Because as you were listening to the message, uh, yeah. the Holy Spirit of God uh, was showing exactly what you needed to do. Uh, and the Holy Spirit of God in my life, many times sitting in a church service, uh, has said, go and apologize to somebody. Go and shake hands with somebody. Uh, amen. There wasn't no need for me to come to the altar and say, Lord, if I've done anything wrong, uh, bless God, I have done something wrong. Uh, the Spirit knew I'd done something wrong. I knew I'd done something wrong. So there wasn't no need in us uh, going back and forth on it. Uh, amen. If you've done something, bless God, if you've done something wrong in your life, amen, you need to do something about it. Amen, don't tip your toe around it. Don't dance around it. Don't get mad at me if I preach on it. Bless God, take care of with God and you'll enjoy the message more. Go ahead. Mm. As a young man, I'm going to go here and I'm going to be finished. As a young man, older men used to love to come back into the back of the church and say, I really enjoyed that preaching. But. Mm. I had a, young, a, a gentleman one night. I had preached about as hard as I'm preaching tonight. I'm soaked plumb too. And I preached about as hard as I'm preaching tonight. And I enjoyed myself. And I had preached on David and Goliath. And I had preached on them five stones. I mean, that, that, that's pretty elementary. I mean, I, I don't know how you can mess that message up. I didn't think. <laughs> and I said, I don't know why 
God told David to go pick up five stones and he only used one. But I know if David had went down to the brook and picked up one, we would not be reading the story of David and Goliath and we would not be reading the story of old King David because old King David would have been laid out there with the rest of them soldiers because he disobeyed God. I left it there. He said, you know why he picked up five stones? I said, why? I said, yeah, because God told him to. That's a good answer. Amen. Yeah. That's an that's a old wise answer. <laughs> Amen. He said, nope, that ain't it. He said, read your Bible. And he gave me scripture to read. I thought, I'm missing something. I'm young in this. I'll take his advice. I'll go home and read. And I don't even remember where he told me to read that because it didn't, it didn't say what he said it said. He said he picked up five stones because Goliath had four other brothers. <laughs> and I got home and I got to reading that and I thought, now whether he had four other brothers or not, I'm not sure. But I don't read my Bible where David took them four stones and go, go, go and kill his other four brothers. Uh, no, bless God, them other four stones didn't do him any good. Uh, <laughs> hey Amen. I don't, I don't know. I don't understand. Uh, but bless God, every now and then, uh, there, there are some people uh, that just feel a need to correct. Uh, bless God, you stay in your lane. Uh, I'll stay in my lane. Uh, and we'll get to heaven uh, just as right as fast as we can. <laughs> he began to look upward. He began to look inward. And then, and only then, did he begin to look outward. I, you say, how do you know that? Well, I believe he got touched, he got healed, he got purged, he got cleaned. That's what my Bible tells me. He said, then one of the seraphims flew unto him, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from the tongs of off the altar, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, lo, this hath touched my lips. Thy iniquity is taken away. Thy sin is purged. He can only look outward after he'd been healed. Anyway. He can only look outward and begin to help others around him once he and himself had gotten taken care of. But it didn't just stop with him. This is what I like. This is what I really enjoy. Then the word came to him right here. And also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom? Shall I sin? Now, God was talking to Isaiah. But he didn't say Isaiah. He just said, whom shall I sin? And I heard a preacher say this one time, and it made perfect sense to me, Daniel. He said, the Lord could have immediately said right there, Isaiah, you go. But he was giving Isaiah an opportunity to do something for him. He wanted Isaiah to step up. Yeah. He laid it out there. He gave him the opportunity. There have been many Christians. God may not have taken a, a, a hammer and beat you over the head with it to get you to do something, but he just laid it out there in front of you and said, this needs done. I need somebody to do it. Maybe you picked up that. Maybe you didn't. This is what Isaiah said. I'll go. Send me. Send me. What's he saying? I'll go knock on that door. I'll make that phone call. I'll tell that person about Jesus. I'll preach that message. I'll sing that song. I'll unlock the church. I'll clean the building. I'll ring the bell. Amen. I'll go to choir appointments and help the choir. Amen. I'll stand at the back door and shake hands. Amen. Who, who? He said, I need somebody to go. Uh, Isaiah said, pick me, Lord. Uh, I'll do it. You know how I know the change took place in Isaiah's life? Uh, bless God, because he was willing to do whatever God asked him to do. Uh, he was willing to take the steps God asked him to take. Uh, he was willing to stand up uh, when nobody else was around him. Uh, was willing to stand up. Uh, bless God, you'll know uh, when the change is taking place in your life. Uh, because you'll get a drive that you've never had before. Uh, you'll get an earning uh, and a yearning uh, that you've never felt before. Uh, you'll get unction. Uh, and power uh, that you've never felt before. Uh, and from Isaiah 7 uh, to Isaiah 66, uh, his life was changed. Because I believe he saw something in Isaiah 6 he'd never seen before. He got into a place with God that he'd never been before. Yeah. And God made a change in his life that he'd never felt before. I never did give you the title of this message got excited. Choosing where to look. Choosing where to look. Isaiah had a choice as to where he could look. He could continue looking all around him at everything that was around him. Or he could look up 
and see something that he ain't ever seen before. And when he made that right choice, God made the big change. Now this could go two ways tonight. Thank you, Lord. I'll be finished. Maria, if you'll get ready to get some song. Gina, if you'll come to the piano and play softly for me, please. There's two ways this could go tonight, Daniel. And I believe Isaiah was a prophet from chapter 1. Why else would he be writing? He would not have been writing God's book if God hadn't already called him. So tonight, tonight you say, oh, this message is good, message for the lost. Is it? Or is it a good message for those that are saved? Because yeah. Yeah. Isaiah was a prophet, but there was something that changed in his prophetic ministry in chapter 6. Maybe there's some Christians here tonight. You're saved. You're on your way to heaven. You're working for God. But God's ready to take you to the next step. God's ready to really just show you something good. God's ready to take you somewhere you've never been before. And work you in a way you've never been working before. And He's waiting on you to look the right direction. I believe many times Christians fall short. Not with sin. Fall short of their spiritual callings. Fall short of the works of God that He wants them to do because they have their eyes in the wrong places. I believe it was in the book. It was in Corinthians, I believe. So Paul's writing to the church of Corinth. I believe. I may be wrong. And he said, some of you be for Paul. Some of you be for Apollos. Some of you say you're for Jesus. He said, Paul plants, Paul's waters, one or the other, but it's God that provides the increase. He said, what are you trying to say? I want to know tonight, where are your eyes at? Where are you looking at? Do you have your eyes fixed on heaven and doing everything you can to get there? And there are many Christians tonight that can look at me square in the face and say, yes, sir, absolutely I am. But there are some Christians tonight they can't say that. They can't say, yes, absolutely, my eyes are on Jesus, and I'm bound and I'm determined. I will not falter. I will not fail. I will not back up. I will not get off track. I'm just going to serve Jesus. There may be a lot that can say that, Daniel. But I would say there are more that would say, Austin, I need to look a little harder. I need to get a little closer. But you said this message could go two ways. Yes, I did. Maybe there's somebody out there tonight that's lost. God has the ability to show you something you've never seen before. Yes. God has the ability to take you a place you've never been before. God has an ability to do a work in your life you've never felt before and give you a love you could never even, you can't even comprehend. The Bible says it's a love that's unexplainable, unimaginable. He can show you that tonight. You say, what do I need to do? You've got to get your eyes off everything that's going on around you and get your eyes on Jesus. If you'll just look for Him. I like that song they sang about the shepherd. It wasn't until a while back I realized why Jesus said, I am the door of the sheepfold. They say out when these shepherds would, would have these fields, they'd go out and they would find a safe haven, a place where they could keep their sheep and keep them safe. And they, what they would do is they'd pile up rocks and make walls all around and at night they would get their sheep and get them all into that sheep bowl you know where the shepherd would lay in the doorway when Jesus said I am the door it literally means he is the door not he opens the door not he provides a door it means he is the door the shepherd was the door the sheep couldn't go out the door because the shepherd was laying in the doorway and his job was to keep all the filth out and keep the flock in bless God what I'm thankful for tonight is that same shepherd is standing there and if you're on the outside looking in all you've got to do is ask of him and he'll step right out of your way and allow you to come into the fold and then he'll protect you he'll watch over you he'll care for you I like that song it said amen that the shepherd picked me up I preached that message on the sheep and what I found out was amen that when a sheep would go off astray 
that the shepherd would go uh, and he'd take that shepherd's hook uh, and he'd scoop around the neck uh, and he'd bring him back to the fold uh, and it would go out again. Uh, he'd bring him back uh, on the third time. Uh, he'd break the leg of the sheep. You say, that's a terrible story. I didn't finish. He'd break the leg of the sheep and then he'd pick it up. He'd lay it on his shoulders until it was ready to walk on its own again. They say sheep uh, are a lot smarter animal than people realize. Why? Well, I, I would assume that means because it only takes one broken leg for him to get it right. But that shepherd scoop him up, put him on his back, and carry him back to the fold. Why? Because he loved the sheep. You say, but he broke his leg. He was trying to give him some help. See, sometimes messages that I preach, they're not enjoyable messages for me or for you. You say, then why do you preach them? I'm trying to help you. We can't preach peace and joy all the time. Why? Because sin's running rampant all around us. And people have a tendency to dabble and dilly around in sin. And if you don't have a man of God that says, don't do that, don't go there, uh, that's not good for you. If the only thing I ever say is just bask in the joy of the Lord. Well, you may not be basking in the joy of the Lord because your life's turned upside down. That's why those messages don't work. But I'm thankful I'm all for this. When God speaks, all I got to do is listen. I don't even have to do any sharing. I don't have to do any aiming. I just got to preach. And the Holy Spirit of God does all the work. Amen. Maybe tonight what you need is just a good dose of the Holy Ghost. Bless God, if that's what you need, why don't you come to the altar and get it? Friend at home, if that's what you need in your life, why don't you kneel down? Taylor just told you. I listened to the message. God convicted my heart. I went to my room. I knelt down by my bed and I took care of business. If he answered at Tammy and Billy's house, he can answer at your house. Yes. Bless God. If he can answer with me driving my truck down the road in the mornings on the way to work, surely tonight he can come into your home and give you exactly what you need. As Maria comes to sing us a song, I do not know tonight what you stand in need of. But this altar is open. Daniel, if you'll get ready, uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn the, the feet off. I want to open the altar up for prayer for those that are here. But I want you to know tonight, if you have need at home, and you're listening to this message, do not put off to tomorrow what needs to be taken care of today. Now, Daniel, I'll tell you right now, one of the things I say at home all the time is why do today what I can put off to tomorrow? That goes for mowing. That goes for repairing things. That goes for any kind of odds and ends around the house. Uh, bless God. Uh, but you know what that doesn't work for? Taking care of things in your spiritual life. If God's knocking on your heart's door tonight, tonight is the night that you need to take care of things. Tonight's the night you need to pray. Tonight's the night you need to get, get, just get things taken care of with Him. I love you and I'm praying for you. God bless. As we stand to our feet tonight. Thank you.